everybody. Uh, my name is Matthew Warnkin, uh, Managing Director of AgriProve, on behalf of AgriProve and the Olsons, Niels and Maya and the Shane, Jamie and, and Sean, we'd like to invite you here today uh, to this workshop, which has uh, got a twofold focus on soil carbon credits under the Emissions Reduction Fund, and then also on Soil Key uh, and the Renovator. This is a project that's building soil carbon through the use of the Soil Key system, which is a very elegant approach to pasture cropping, essentially planting over existing pasture with a whole bunch of different species in order to then drive additional organic matter in, into that soil and then also improve uh, the overall functioning of the farm with a salad bowl approach to livestock fodder. The Soil Key Renovator is a seeding machine for planting annual crops into pasture that fill the feed gaps for the summer and the winter growth. The method of fluffing up the seed bed while the rotating blades creates a green manure crop and aeration that has got a continuous feed source coming to the plants for six or seven weeks. Then the plant's self-sustainable and takes over from there. This was planted three weeks ago? Yep, a bit over three weeks, three and a half weeks and um, haven't had much rain since, but we'll have a look and see what we've actually got underneath here. Nice fresh young roots coming down out of the trench of the machine. We've got the uh, peas starting to go right down, breaking up. The soil carbon is produced by the breaking down of this uh, stubble dry, dry matter. Also, the sugars that are exuded out of the root systems of the plant down into the soil, and, and, and that is the sugars of straight carbon into the soil. The plant uses those sugars to feed the microbes that feed the nutrients back to the plant. This is a pea plant, Matthew, that we planted just over three weeks ago, and we had seven mil of rain two days after we planted it, and virtually nothing since, just a few heavy dews, and it's um, kept growing quite well but it's, it's already really doing a great job at fixing nitrogen nodulation on that root system. And that is the main driver for putting carbon back into the soil. That's the energy source for that to all happen. And, um, so you need nitrogen to grow carbon. Yes. So you're growing your own nitrogen yes. uh, uh, in situ on, on the farm. On, on the farm. In the, the middle of summer on the driest period, it's still going quite fine. And then all that root matter after the, the peas grazed off by, yep. the, by the cows, then that goes straight into the organic carbon. In the soil. This soil structure's all, all been uh, worked by the worms over the last sort of six months through, through, through the winter. And um, now, now it's sort of at that point where it's sort of drying up a bit, getting firmer. But it, it still crumbles up quite nicely. It's still got a bit of moisture in it, even though it hasn't rained for three weeks, it's still quite moist. But uh, the plants have got to be functioning fairly well to extract that moisture out, and you've got to have your mycorrhizal fungi actually in there doing its job, uh, and um, you'll create um, good plant growth, even though there's not much moisture around. As a carbon project developer, I visit a lot of farms around Australia, and there was something immediately you know, different and special about you know, visiting the Olsen's uh, place here, and so there's that mix of species, it was you know, what was done, and you could actually you know, feel that sponginess as you walked across each, each paddock. You know, I learned more about soils you know, in the sort of the time I've spent with Niels and actually seeing in life as to what healthy soils mean and you can actually see that structure, you can almost actually smell that quality of, 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 of soil. And the exciting thing for us as a carbon project developers is every soil carbon credit that, we, you know, that comes off this project is an independent verification of the overall farming system which is soil carbon equals agricultural productivity. When we first started here, we had about 50 millimetres of topsoil on, on this area, and underneath was a, a, a light grey, and then it went into a yellow clay, uh, about 150 to 200 millimetres down. Now we've got quite a good functioning 150 millimetres of topsoil, and that is enabling us to grow fodder in, in the summer when it's drier, and in the winter when it's colder and wetter. It's been a real eye-opener to us what's happening down deeper. Here we are increasing carbon a metre down and getting worms and, and plant roots coming out the bottom of our sample. We have changed a fair few of the species that we're growing, like the deeper rooted plants, and, and that's really helped that and put the pathways down and now virtually all the plants are going down there, chasing that moisture. Yeah. 
the carbon that does get down there with the root system actually stays down there. It's very hard, it won't oxidise off with the sunlight and, and burn off. Where before we were only accessing maybe 200 millimetres deep over the 100 hectares, now we're accessing a metre deep or more and that area that we're now able to access nutrients from is, is equivalent to like a metre high um, bank of soil, 100 metres wide by 8 kilometres long. So there's 800,000 cubic metres of extra nutrients underneath our farm that we've always been farming on. My favourite plant in the, the mix of species is the, uh, the tillage radish. I think it best you know, sums up in terms of the, the carbon story and what's going on with the mixed species. It's that root system that's just pumping that organic matter down into the soil and they you know, provide a food source for those bugs, that microbial activity. So then you've got the stock, you know, sort of grazing, grazing that off and this becomes the fodder. And that's all remaining, decomposing, you know, forming that basis for soil organic carbon and also further enhancing rainfall and infiltration. So it's biological jackhammer. Yes. Brilliant. Using the soil key, We've had five years of no animal health issues whatsoever. No call out for any vet. It makes it very easy to farm without that pressure of having to watch the animal so much because um, there's just no hassles at all anymore. Yeah, you're not buying any feed in? No, no, no brought in feed. We're set up now that we don't have to do hay and silage. We've got the ability now to grow feed in those harder to grow times of the year. So we're filling the feed gaps with fodder or we're actually growing excess fodder. We've got probably three and a half, four months of feed on the property now in two months of tough time. We're well covered before the autumn break. It's working very well. There's real significant potential in the carbon sequestration on, on the farm and what's been delivered on the project. We measured 11.2 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent between our baseline sampling ground and our first sampling ground, which is almost equivalent to growing a forest. But we're not taking land out of production, we're enhancing that agricultural production. And the significance is the replicability across all different grazing, cattle grazing and dairy operations, not only in the Gippsland region, but then out throughout those other dairy and high quality beef cattle regions throughout Australia. The potential of soil carbon worldwide is enormous. This is due to the fact that 65% of the land mass is controlled by farmers. So if uh, all of our farmers, Australia and international, started to improve their soil carbon, we would be able to draw down a large amount of CO2 from the air, mitigate climate change. As you increase your soil carbon, you improve its structure, its water holding capacity, everything you need for a farm to be able to adapt to the increases in temperature. Worldwide, I now get many people calling me and saying, what can we do in this space? We understand now that soil carbon is the way of the future if we're going to continue to farm and feed people. So the key to all of this is participation, finding farmers who are willing to put their hands up to participate in a soil organic carbon project. And on our end, we're working to reduce all those costs, to reduce the cost of soil measurement, to reduce the cost of audit. We're also working with the Department of Environment and the Clean Energy Regulator to bring all those costs down to remove that barrier to widespread replicability and scalability. And so to sum up in one word, where we're heading is mainstream. This is a mainstreaming activity now in terms of how do we mainstream soil carbon projects as part of agricultural, normal agricultural practice. The next five to 10 years are tremendously exciting as we get more and more data about soil, we get more and more understanding of how soil biology interacts with productivity and reference points. Each soil carbon project provides a reference point not only to soil organic carbon but to the farming system as well which will build up speed and momentum in terms of new adopters and more people coming on board to participating. And if we mainstream this as an approach to agriculture in terms of greenhouse gas reductions, we are talking in the millions, even hundreds of millions of tonnes of reductions in Australia alone with worldwide potential and application. So it's tremendously exciting, both from the agriculture and the emissions reduction perspective. If you'd like to build soil carbon on your farm, give AgriProve a call on 1300 Go Soil.